welcome. Thank you for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. I am so excited to talk to you. I watched your interview with Dr. Seshkin that you did uh, for the Endo Foundation. And I just want to commend you for your bravery because anytime you come out publicly with anything that personal, like an illness, it takes a lot of guts and a lot of grit, especially in this environment that can be really hard. Thank you. Yeah, you know, actually for years now, I've been wanting to um, talk about my experience with endometriosis and I just haven't found the right time or, or maybe even I was a little scared. I, I don't fully know, but for whatever reason, this felt like the right time. It was Endometriosis Awareness Month and I'm such a huge fan of the work that the Endo Foundation does. And so, um, yeah, it was it was an honor to speak with him and he, you know, such an expert in the disease and how it works and um, I learned a lot from that conversation myself. Yes, definitely. And I think we can share a little bit of news that you are now an EndoFound ambassador. I am. I am. I, I'm very, very excited about it. Um, I, I had a long um, Zoom meeting with everyone at the organization and, and what they're doing and, and how I could lend my name in, in anything. You know, I, I, I'm not a doctor. I can't do any research, but what I can do is tell my story and share it and, and hopefully, um, you know, spread awareness so that young women can get diagnosed earlier. Um, I wish I had this information I have now when I was, you know, 15, 16, 17 years old, um, starting to experience these symptoms and not knowing where to go for that. And what I really wanted to talk to you about as, as two women that have endometriosis is for me, I really didn't know a lot about endo. I didn't have a family member who had it. Um, your journey was a little bit different. What was your familiarity with endo? Because I believe it was your grandmother, right? That had it. Yes. But the funny thing is I didn't know my grandmother and my aunt had it oh, wow. until after I was diagnosed. So there was no dialogue in my family about, um, this disease like i feel like my grandmother comes from a, a time where you know this type of stuff wasn't talked about you didn't um you know disclose that type of information and so when i got diagnosed in 2018 i called my mom and i said is there anybody else in our family that has endometriosis and my mom was like yeah grandma has it and i was like how has nobody told me this and my aunt had it as well and and i had never heard it before and i think there's just a stigma to to talking about women's health and and um you know these this disease and so i'm at least now i have two sisters that are 12 and 13 and i'm very vocal with them like hey if you start feeling this way if this happens to you it runs in our family like this is what you do and um, i'm hoping to change the narrative um within, within even my own family of being more transparent about um you know, our own history. Right, because the average is 10 years for women to get diagnosed. And within those 10 years of having these symptoms, either they're suffering in silence and thinking this is just quote unquote normal to have pain with your period, which we know now it's not. And because of this open discussions, we're trying to say, hey, let's not normalize pain. Pain is a symptom of something mm -hmm. being wrong within your body. But I mean, the other thing is that there should not be any stigma about women talking candidly about what's going on with their bodies or individuals born with the uterus. And for you, what were some of the symptoms that you were like, uh, this is not feeling quite right to me, if you don't mind sharing, of course. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I started having symptoms badly right when I graduated college. It started becoming more, my periods were really, really painful. Um, I was getting these cramps that were so bad that I remember thinking, I hope I pass out so that I can go to the hospital. Like I hope I basically become unconscious because it was so, the, the pain, it's, it's so hard to even describe to somebody who doesn't have it, but it's, yeah, you know, yeah. it, it, I was on the floor, I was vomiting. Um, it was just, unbearable and that's when I knew I got to the point I was like this can't be normal you're taught in school periods hurt and like periods are painful and so you have no gauge to how painful is too painful you know mm -hmm. like you kind of start justifying it in your head um and so yeah I just had these really painful periods um that became debilitating at what point were you like I need medical intervention and then when you did seek it were you diagnosed right away or was it kind of that 
story we hear of like, uh, yeah, you don't look sick. No, that's not it. It's IBS. It's whatever, but no one's mentioning endometriosis. Yeah. It actually came again. I was, I was laying on the floor, um, in pain in the bathroom and my roommate came in and she said, this isn't normal. I don't experience this. And like, you need to ask for help. And so her saying that to me was actually really um, a turning point in my whole perspective on it. Cause I thought, you know, this is just how it goes. And, and for her to be like, this is not what you should be experiencing um, was really life-changing. And so I did have the same experience that so many women have where I went to my, you know, routine OBGYN, the one I, you know, went with since I was, when I started going and they were like, oh, it seems like you have bladder symptoms. You should go to a bladder specialist. Then I went there and then they were like, you should go to a, another OBGYN and just like doctor to doctor to doctor to doctor. And it became to a point where my boyfriend at the time, not my current boyfriend, um, was like, you know, maybe you're just, you know, finding problems because you're looking for problems. I go to the doctor. I don't ever go to the doctor and I'm fine. And I was like, wow, you really don't believe me. Like you don't believe that what I'm experiencing is chronic pain. Like you don't believe what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. So that was, uh, that was a tough pill to, to swallow. And I, I mean, I have empathy for not being able to understand someone else's journey fully, but, um, it was definitely really discouraging. And then the, when I got diagnosed, or I heard endometriosis for the first time was my fifth doctor. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. These stories hurt my heart because I know what you're feeling as I can empathize with that because you're so scared. You know, something's wrong. You don't feel like you're being validated. You have someone at the time that you're trusting, you're, you're giving your confidence to, and they're in so many ways being like, well, I don't know, maybe it's in your head. If yeah. someone's, and if you didn't advocate for yourself, you might be where you were in 2018 without a diagnosis. But yeah. I, I think that's, if you can give any advice to someone who might be watching this and is having symptoms of endo, but is feeling like they don't have confidence in themselves or advocating for themselves. You know, I would say it takes a lot of guts because, um, yeah, you are your own advocate and you have doctors that tell you you're okay. And I would say that if you're experiencing pain that is debilitating you from going to work, going to school, showing up for yourself, doing the things that you love, um, if you're at that point, something is wrong. And you do have to be your own champion and your own advocate. And I will say there is hope out there. I feel like there is so much more information now um, to getting help. So things like what you're doing um, really open up the access for people to get the information they need. And I would say to lean on other endo warriors. I joined a lot of different Facebook groups and things like that. And just hearing other women's stories, I was like, this is what, this is what I'm going through. Yeah. And that was really, um, that really kept me going. You and your dad are super close. I was looking through your Instagram and to see that kind of supportive father daughter relationship was really inspiring. When you were going through this, your dad must have been completely just worried about your overall well being. Yeah. Well, you know what? It's actually sad. I didn't really tell him. I was going from doctor to doctor to doctor. Like I didn't really tell him about all of this. And and it's so weird because we have such a close relationship, but I, I just didn't, I don't know. Maybe I, I wasn't sure if I was right. Like if I, you know, I'm being told no, I'm thinking maybe I am crazy. And it wasn't until I was, um, I scheduled my surgery that I told my dad, this is what I've been experiencing. This is what's going on. And he was right next to me at my bed when I went into surgery and was so supportive of me, but I did feel, I guess, shame about it and not wanting to like burden my dad with that. I don't know. Yeah. No, I got, I understand that. No, it makes sense. It makes sense. And I could see you got like a little emotional. Yeah. It's just like, it's, it shouldn't be that way. You know, it, it really shouldn't be that way. And and I can feel for so many women out there that, um, that have been through this experience. Well, I'm crying. 
<laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Cause it, it hits home. It really does. And, yeah. and what is he, it, you know, we touched upon it earlier about what it takes to come forward. And again, it's, I know from my own journey, like I had a lot of people say really good things and supportive things when I first came publicly forward. And then I had some people who said I did it wrong and I didn't mm. say the right things. And, and my heart was in the right place. Like my, my hope was just for awareness and wow. um, advocacy for more research and better treatment options. What would, you know, your dad being Jamie Foxx and being a veteran of this industry, was he like, you know, go forward or was he wanting to protect his baby girl? <laughs> No, I mean, he, he wanted me to, to speak about this as much as I felt comfortable. And I think it took me a few years to just, um, to even just heal and then figure out what I wanted to say. And so he's so supportive of anything, everything I do. Um, and so I, he is my biggest cheerleader and I feel like I felt confident to, um, talk about my journey because, um, he really supports me. That's awesome. And you guys have just teamed up on a really fun project that I've been yeah. watching the teasers for on Netflix. Dad, stop embarrassing me. And yeah. you are in a behind the scenes role as a producer, which is amazing. And I want to talk about that. Can you tell us a little bit about the show and your role in it? Yeah. So the show's called Dad, Stop Embarrassing Me. It's going to be on Netflix. And it is based on the real life relationship between me and my dad. And um, it is so much fun. It's my dad's return to, to sitcom television. So everyone's excited to see him back where they met him, you know, like on the Jamie Foxx show and in Living Color. And yeah, I'm an EP on it. I mean, I feel like no one knows the story better than myself. <laughs> uh, because it, it's all these things that I've lived through and all these funny, um, embarrassing moments. You know, my dad, he's this very charismatic, over the top, um, you know, loud guy. And when you're a teenage girl, that's not how you want your dad to be. You want him to blend in as much as possible. So we had all these funny stories of, of him embarrassing me, him, um, you know, just doing too much. And we really wrote episodes from those. And so um, I casted this amazing actress, Kyla Drew, to play a version of me. And uh, it is a really rewarding experience. Oh, that's cool. You have so much on your plate, but you're still giving back. And you've also partnered. Um, and I just want to mention too, you've won an Emmy. Oh, yeah. Well, I was in a show that won an Emmy, but yes, yes. I mean, you've won an Emmy. You can say that. I think that's fair enough. And, and just within the last uh, last year. Yeah. Last year. Um, so, yeah, you've been super busy and a lot of irons in a lot of different places, but you partnered with the National Alliance on Mental Health. Why is that such a passion project for you? Yeah, I've been working with them since 2017. I'm an ambassador for them as well. And I was diagnosed with an anxiety disorder when I was 14 years old. And I, over the last 13 years, have developed you know, my own tools for combating it. And I really um, feel like I've gotten a good grip on my anxiety, but I really wanted to speak very similar to this, you know, like the more you, you talk about it and the more you break the stigma of talking about it, um, the more people can get help. And so I always felt like I was so blessed to um, ask for help at a young age and feeling comfortable with my family to say, hey, I'm not feeling well. Like, you know, can we explore some options? And that was a blessing to me. And I just want to extend that to others other people, um, especially young people who are feeling these um, symptoms for maybe the first time in their lives. Yeah. Yeah. And I do think there is a correlation between endo and mental health because- Oh, affects, totally. Yeah. It definitely affects. Do you want to touch upon that a little? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I feel like chronic pain um, can lead to depression, to anxiety, to PTSD, especially going to doctors, to doctors, to doctors, being told no, being pride, being probed all the time. I mean, th that's a recipe for PTSD. And so there is a huge correlation between mental health and your physical health and um, your physical um, challenges. And so I feel like, and I was telling actually the end of foundation people, um, I would love to find a way to work um, to do something with both the organizations, because I think there's absolutely um, a correlation between the two. Yeah. Well, you've just started your work here in the end of a community, and I'm yeah. happy that you're a part of it. And you have a, a whole entire 
support system here. So I hope that you'll come back on. And you also know that if you ever need anything just personally. (laughs) Oh, you're, you're so sweet. Yes. I I'm sure we will talk again and work together again. And I, I just really applaud what you did to basically see a need in the community and then creating and fulfilling that, um, that need. And so thank you for what you're doing. You're, you're doing the work. Oh, thank you very much. Well, we'll talk soon. Thank you. Okay. Have a great day. You too. Bye guys.